Hello Nigeria, hello Africa. You're watching Plus TV Africa and the program is Sports Business with Orufo Izaga. Today we have yet another packed edition for you. You know, I say that every week, but um, today if you are into the sports business space, you want to listen to this program and hear what we have to discuss because it's very, very crucial to sports business success. Today, we're going to be talking about branding. Branding, to most people, might just be the logo that you have created or the colors that you have chosen. But branding is a discipline, a marketing discipline that runs much deeper than that. And it is fundamental to the successes of the world's biggest um, companies. All right, so today in the studio with me, I have Mr. Muyua Kayode. He is the CEO of USB Brand Management, and he's also the author of two books on branding. The first is The Seven Dimensions of Branding, as well as Brand Nation. Mr. Muyua Kayode is a very vastly experienced brand management consultant and expert. And um, so I'd like you to listen to what he has to say if you're in the sports space, because he can probably affect how you look at your brand today and show you ways that you can improve your brand going forward. The Nigerian sports business space is beginning to pick up. The local industry is beginning to buzz. Last season, uh, we saw what we saw of the MPFL, for instance, and um, um, other sports are beginning to uh, wake up as well. Now, is this something that is going to be sustainable? How we brand what we do is going to, you know, have a say in whether we're going to be able to um, succeed long term or whether we're just going to, you know, do, you know, um, exist on the level that we have so far, the shilly shally level. But I think we're, we're getting there. I think pe people are beginning to see um, more private investors come into the sports space. And as they come in, they're going to come in with, you know, um, more hunger for the things that have made them succeed outside of the sports industry, like maybe in the banking sector, for instance, or in the um, investment banking sector and stuff like that. You know, so as we welcome the private investors as they come in, and especially in Nigerian football, in the Nigerian football hierarchy, we have seen a lot of new investors getting into the NLO, uh, which is the third tier of the Nigerian league, the NNL, which is the second tier of the Nigerian league, and of course the MPFL. And we have had also clubs that have been in the MPFL forever. What sort of branding have they had? Uh, is there something they can do to improve? Uh, some people will tell you that you know, branding still exists on the embryonic level. We're going to see as this program uh, progresses where we are at with branding and what we need to do to improve. I'm going to give you a minute to, to relax, to stretch your legs, to get some water, or maybe invite a friend to, to listen to this program with you because it's something that both of you care about. You know, and um, so I'll say to you, you're welcome to the program Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. You're watching Plus TV Africa, and we're reaching you live from our studios in Lagos. We're talking branding today, sports branding, or branding in sports. And we have in the studio Mr. Muyua Kayode, who, who is um, the CEO of USP Brand Management and the author of two books on branding, namely um, The Seven Dimensions of, of Branding as well as Brand Nation. Welcome to the studio, Muyua. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Muyua, it's, it's, a, it's, um, it's a pleasure to have you uh, in the studio because I think what you have to say is very important to sports business and um, I don't know if you agree with me that this, the local sports industry is beginning to wake up. Do, do you have a sense that that's the case? Absolutely, yes. I think, um, first let me just uh, commend you. Mm -hmm. um, I like this program. I like what you even call the program, mm -hmm. sports business, mm -hmm. because I think one of the most um, critical things we need to do mm -hmm. in this country, as far as our sports is concerned, is to reposition sports mm -hmm. as business, because it's serious business. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people in the decision-making sphere mm. do not even see sports as business. Mm. 
a lot of us see sports as something that government should do. Mm -hmm. You know, and government see government sees it as social putting activity. social I mean corporate social responsibility. Even companies sometimes they see it as corporate social responsibility. Mm -hmm. The few of them that actually get involved to support sports, they see it as just donating money mm -hmm. yeah. and then government at different levels they think it's just about okay let's spend this one on sports let's budget this mm. one for sports mm. no sports is serious business mm. and we need to reposition it as such do you know now you're talking about how organizations view sport this is a bit of a digression but we're coming to to our subject of the day very quickly um is the fact that you know i had a guest recently that the company sponsors um, one of the teams in Nigeria, uh, Rangers, they do, they have a shared sponsorship with mm. Rangers. And, you know, I asked, how much did it cost you? He said, 15 million. So, Muywa, for the nine months of the league, every match, every event, every occasion, everything Rangers had to do had the brand on, they emblazoned on their, on, their, on their chests. Do you understand? So, I said to guys that, look, 50 million naira is not even up to how much some brands pay one musician to entertain them for one night. Yeah. <laughs> Do you understand? True. Yet you can spend nine months in the faces of Nigerians with your brand if you get behind spots. Do you understand? So that's how important it can be. All right. But let's talk about branding today. Um, yeah. I, I know you have a few slides that you want to show us. Uh, <laughs> so uh, first, before we even get to the, the slides, on a general level, what, what's branding and how do you think it would, um, um, it would, why do you think sports business owners, sports property builders, asset managers need branding um, to thrive? Well, you know, I, I say that without branding, mm. sports is just physical activity. Mm. You can have a group of 20 people playing football on the streets, mm. They are just engaging in physical Ex activity. Yeah, but, when, uh, but when it is Eniba versus Rangers, mm. then it's no longer physical activity. Yeah. That is the difference. Because Eniba versus Rangers now, you have applied branding. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So those clubs now are not just a group of 11 people playing football mm. by the roadside. They are now a club. Mm. A club that stands for something mm. that has identity mm. that has fans and supporters mm. and management and all of mm. that so that is the difference mm. and as you rightly say you are talking sports business without branding there's no business if you are not building a brand you are not building a business mm. okay and when you apply the principles of branding to sports or any other human activity it becomes a successful business. Hmm. Okay, so when you say that, when you bring Rangers and um, yeah, uh, yeah. Aimba together in a game, now it moves from being sports, mere sports um, recreation or mere sports engagement to a, a war of brands, perhaps, you know? Um, <laughs> so now you have the names, for instance. So if you have the names, you probably have some sort of... Um, logo to it some colors some yeah. songs and is that what you're trying to say it, it, it now has an identity because the name has a meaning it has mm. what it connotes in the minds of people has history and exactly mm. and then it, even in terms of the culture mm. when you say anyba for example certain things come to your mind mm. you know and there's a reason why the football club is named as such yeah so you are now beginning to give it identity to give it meaning to mm. give it culture mm. and all of that you know so that that's what makes a difference and that is what brings people that's what attracts people and when you attract people you have an audience mm. you have value mm. because the people you attract are now willing to spend their time and money mm. on that brand yeah and it translates to economic value yeah so um before again we get to your slides let me ask again based on what you have seen of the local environment do you think that um, people take branding in sports business seriously you know when you look at our clubs for instance or when you look at the federations do you think do you think branding is something that they they take seriously? i don't think so mm. i don't think so because um a lot of things would 
be, will be done differently if 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 the basic principles of branding are properly applied yeah. and, and consistently too. Mm -hmm. A lot of things will be done differently, mm -hmm. and the the value creation mm -hmm. will be a lot a lot more than what There'll we're be a lot seeing. more thought to it. I'm telling you, yeah. yeah. Okay, so maybe we should look at your, your, your slides uh, because and you have them in stages, I suppose. Yeah, uh, I so. mean, you see, because um, you talked about um, uh, branding being much more than uh, just logo and, and, and packaging, mm. as a lot of people uh, are, are, are want to say. Mm. Now, um, I've, I do a lot of training. Okay. You know, and talk on branding. And one of the things that um, we have done over the years is to simplify things, you know, mm -hmm. and put it in a capsule that people can understand. Okay. So, and one of those is what I call the VVIP formula, okay. which is a way to just, you know, break it down into simple, actionable steps that everybody can understand. Is that what you have on your slide? Yeah. And okay, maybe we, we can have a, a look at the slides now so that we can see, um, we can see, yeah, this is the first slide, isn't it? No, that's not the first slide. It's not the, the first, first slide. is vision. Oh, okay, so, the first slide, please, um, the vision slide. So when we say, okay, so. when we say VVIP, yeah. VVIP in this case stands for vision, value, identity, and promotion. So now... The first one is vision. The first V there is vision. Yeah. And vision is all about, it's about dreaming. It's about envisioning what, you know, whether it's a product or a, an enterprise or an institution or whatever it is, what vision do you have for that institution, for yeah. that business, yeah. for that entity? What yeah. is your vision? Yeah. Where do you see that entity in the next five years, in the next 10 years? Mm. So if you want to have a vision, for example, for... Our national team, Super Eagles, you coming as the new maybe NFF president. I mm. say, look, my vision is for us to win the World Cup in the next 12 years. Mm. Okay? Mm. That is vision. Mm. You now come down to the next one, which is value. Okay. Okay? Now, value is the second V. Mm. Value is now about creating value. Mm. Because if you are not creating value, you don't have a brand. Mm. If, for example, you are a football club. Mm. And you decide that, okay, at every of our home game, we are going to have 10 minutes of entertainment mm. during the halftime. Mm. Maybe we'll bring an A-list musician to entertain the other. That is value. Mm. For that alone, a lot of people will want to come and watch your games, mm. right? And you can make that as part of your own strategy, as part of your marketing strategy. Mm. Mm. Because... Without creating value, you are not creating a brand. Because when you create value, your audience and customers and consumers are willing to pay for value. They are not there to donate money to charity. Mm. They want value for their money. Mm. Right? Mm. So that is the second V. Now, the third one is identity. Okay. Right? So identity now means that what what is your brand character what is your personality what do you stand for how do you want that entity to appear to the people mm. and what kind of people do you want to appeal to because that will also influence how you appear to them mm. so identity is where you now talk about logo design mm. colors apparel mm. and all of those things that is where you now have the identity mm. right but because identity is what people see visually, that is visually appealing to people, a lot of people think that, okay, maybe that's what branding is all about. No. Mm. You see that we have gone two steps before we get to that mm. identity mm. because you have to define who you are before you decide what you are going to, you know, uh, appear as, right? Mm. And then the, the last one is the P, which is promotion. Okay. When you have done those three legs, you now promote and promote and promote and promote. And you can never over-promote your brand, your brand. Right? So that, in a nutshell, that VVIP formula, if you apply it to the branding process, it just breaks down. There are a whole lot 
more layers to it, but this is just to break it down for the layman to understand that, okay, even as an SME, you want to create a small product, follow these four steps and you won't get it wrong. You know, you know they say that um, there's this um, favorite quote of mine that goes, complexity mm. is easy. Simplicity takes mastery which is what you have just done. You know, you know, when you master something, it's not so easy for you to explain it to, to a six-year-old. And even me with my old brain, I can remember what VVIP now stands for, you know, uh, vision, value, identity, promotion. All right? Easy enough, yeah? But so we are, yeah, I want to do um, a brand... I want to come up with a brand for my, my, my club or my sports property, all right? We have been there before. We have been known to do things in a certain way, right? What do we do? Um, if you come in, what are you going to ask me? What, how are you going to get, get to even understand what my 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 challenges I'm, I'm asking this question <laughs> now because i'm taking the position of say a club owner out there who probably is watching us mm. and says okay i'm listening to these two guys talk about branding on television you know if if this guy comes to me tomorrow and says he wants to do he wants to look at my brand or wants, is this something that you influence you provoke or is something that uh, the man himself feels that he needs and then he reaches out to you uh, well, you know, it has to come from the, uh, the man, the club, mm. because you have to have... I understand also that a lot of clubs in our MPFL mm. do not... either do not see the need for that process or do not know how to go about it. Mm. You know, they see... I mean, we, we all see foreign leagues. Mm. And... There are two sides to it. Mm. We have the side of the spectators who are constantly watching the, prem, the English Premier League and La Liga and all these foreign leagues and who don't care about our NPFL. Mm. We have that. And then we have those who are running the clubs in our NPFL who also see foreign leagues and foreign clubs. Mm. Some of them are fans of some of these foreign clubs. Mm. Yeah, there are many of them. Mm. Okay? And they see the difference. Sometimes they don't know how to go about yes. making that kind of thing happen. We understand why a lot of our fans, football fans, are so hooked on foreign clubs and foreign leagues. Mm. And we spend a lot of money sometimes to even go to the stadium abroad and watch these games. And sometimes to buy merchandise and all of that. What is the process that has taken them to that point? This is, these are the questions our club owners here should be asking themselves. And it is not difficult for you to apply professional expertise to make those things happen. Mm. It is not going to happen overnight, but if you know what you're doing, you will see that incremental difference every season. Season in, season out. There are some things that clubs... Let me give you an example. Take... I'm trying not to mention specific names of clubs. Take um, some of these EPL clubs, for example. Mm. Mm. When you go to the stadium, they have... They even have club anthem that they sing. Mm. That once the fans you know, get charged. Mm. They chant, they have chants, they have songs. Mm. That is, those are part of the branding process. Okay? So, if, because you must create elements around that club that will make people fall in love with the club. This, this point that you made, right, about fans chanting their club songs and things like that. You know, I had an experience that... Um, at um, um, the, the Mobilaji Johnson Stadium when I went to watch sports in Lagos. I was actually very shocked that, you know, a club that's less than two, two three years old, mm -hmm. they had fans, they had a song. Um, yeah. I think it's some let's go sporting, let's go, you know, some, something like that, you know. And then um, when we were leaving, 
it was a bad day for them and I heard the fans complaining bitterly that, oh, why did they fire the coach mid-season? You know? And I was thinking, oh, so they do these things here. I mean, fans can be that emotionally invested in our clubs, right? But here's the thing, though. I think that where I usually have a problem with us in Nigeria is that if you want to build a brand, you've got to be... I have never read in my, in my entire experience in marketing where somebody built a great brand that was not 100, in fact, 150% passionate about what they were building. Yeah. As in, passionate to the extent they, they can't see anything else, it's just their brand. Do you get it? But when I watch, like, in, I see club owners in Nigeria, you know, they go for a player presentation, you're wearing a foreign jersey. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's madness. As in, they're wearing a foreign jersey. I see top people in the league, they're doing uh, supporters of Europa. I said, you know, so is that, is that, a, is that, a, is that a branding challenge you, for you will even see You will even see public officials wearing yes. foreign club jerseys to the national stadium. Yes. For, for, uh, it's, it's, it's appalling, you know. And talking about passion, you see, in my second book, Brand Nation, mm. I talk about the three P's mm. of branding because mm. now the book talks about branding and how to apply the principles of branding mm. to nation building. Mm. And it's broken into three P's. Those okay. three P's, the first P is people. Okay. And there's a reason why the first P is people because people must come first. You mm. can't do anything without people, mm. right? The second P is products. Mm. Sorry, the second P is places. Okay. And then the third P is products. Okay. So we have people, places, and products. If we apply the principles of branding to our people, and then our places, and then our products. Now, applying it to our people means that you now have to create value. Hmm. Don't forget that value is essential to brand creation. You must hmm. create value. Now, how do you create value for our people? Let's talk specifically now. Let's narrow it to sports. Every day, everybody is talking about football, football, mm. football. Mm. Is that the only sport? You know? So if you want to create value mm. and develop our people, mm. right, you mo then you now come up with a plan for sports development that touches every local government. Now, they have said, okay, with this Supreme Court ruling now, mm. local governments areas are going to have autonomy yeah and then, and then in doing that to have a sensible and workable development plan you must now come up with a strategy maybe on the state level or whatever level mm. where you you set out minimum infrastructure that each local government must have mm. a mini sports center a commercial center with shopping mall and offices, a general hospital, a certain minimum standard of primary and secondary public schools. You have to set out minimum standards of in every local government, even the least, the least developed local government must have these basic amenities. But you see, the, no, I agree with you on that, right? And um, but, but you see, to have the commitment to do the things that mm. you say, you've got to feel I'm a certain, coming, a certain I'm coming, pride I'm in doing coming, that. I'm coming to that, you okay. see, because the whole point of this mm. is that when you manage things the way brand managers manage brands, yeah. you will see the difference. It's just like, for example, you see the, the, the if, if you bring a brand manager of the leading or one of the leading soft drink brands into this studio or in any public space, that person will never, no matter what the conversation is, that mm. person will never mention the name of a competitor. Thank, brand. Thank he you. will never mention it. Do you understand? Mm. That is how passionate they mm. are about their brand. What you're talking about, mm. that's the only thing they see, they think about it, they drink it. They, that's the only thing in their world. Mm. You are shut out from any other, you know, and that is the culture. So when you apply 
some of these principles and you begin to have that government officials you see themselves as brand managers because you are managing the national brand yes and you must apply those principles of branding mm. to what you are managing if that is done the difference will be so clear in fact this point that you have raised Mwewa, i'm totally with you in, the, in in the because it's the little co branding am i right in saying for instance that a brand has component parts and that you know you, they all must work together for for the whole is that, is that absolutely yeah okay so for instance if i see say the lagos state governor go out to say to the to england to go and watch a club and the the picture of the governor in england watching this club is is um is um, shown to millions tens of millions of young nigerians what registers in their head is not a picture of a proud Nigeria that we're building, you know, but maybe, you know, do as I say and not as I do. <laughs> do you understand? It's, it, 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 it still comes down to you running, managing a brand. Yeah. And how passionate you feel about, feel about brand, that brand. Yeah. You know, because you see, when, when, when you, when you, a vision when you create a vision mm. Mm, that is what is driving you yeah you wake up in the morning you are thinking about that vision mm. before you go to sleep at night that is what you are thinking yeah. about you know it it, it 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 takes over your soul yeah that is that is what brand that is what branding does and when you wake up each day and you are seeing baby steps slow but incremental steps towards that vision. vision. It gets you excited. Yeah. The closer you get to it, the more excited you are. Okay. So, we have, um, we have been listening to Mr. Muyuwa Kayode, the CEO, USB Brand Management. And, uh, of course, we've been talking about branding and sports branding. And I'm sure if you've listened uh, since the start of the program, you would have enjoyed uh, the discussion about to, to this point. Now, we're going to go on a short break. And uh, when we return, we're going to now try and bring what we're talking about to the local scene with specific examples um, from like the MPFL, for instance. And we're going to get Mr. Coyote to, to explain more what he sees of what's happening locally and um, how we can proceed so that we can turn the sports industry into one gigantic industry that we think it can be um, in the in the in the short to, to even to even to the, in the medium term but i'm i'm saying maybe even in the short term all right so we're going to take a very short break don't go away uh, make sure that um, you bring more people to, to watch with you because they can benefit from the call them to so that they can benefit from this um, discussion as well all right i'll see you shortly and when we return, the business continues. Welcome to the program, Sports Business with Orufor Ezaga. We're reaching you from um, Plus TV Africa. You're watching Plus TV Africa, and we're actually reaching you from our studios in Lagos. We're talking branding today, sports branding. And in the studio with me is Mr. Mugiwa Kayode, the CEO of USB Brand Management. All right. He's the author of two books on branding, uh, including the seven dimensions of branding and brand nation all right now we're going to look at you know a few of the brands that we have in the nigerian um, premier football league to see whether you know the little branding tricks or techniques have been followed by the people that design these brands and what mr Muiwa can um, suggest or you know basically his view and so that if you're if you're if you're thinking of starting a sports um, um, initiative, you would know from the start, you know, the steps you need to take um, to ensure that you get your branding right. All right? So, Muiwa, we're back to brand sports branding. We're going to take a look at some of the logos um, from uh, the MPFL to see whether uh, we, you know, they have, they, they have followed the little techniques of branding as far as it concerns the externals, right? And because we all know that the externals are driven by internal considerations like you said, vision, 
the values of the club and and stuff like that. So if we can have the slide on, on of the club logos, this is the 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 Remosters brand. Can we see it in, 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 in both the white and the blue backgrounds? Because so that we can see, okay, so what do you think? Um, I mean, this is just a logo, right? But you know what is, I find exciting about the Remo logo? The 33, right? What does it stand for? What does it stand? Good question. We had them over for a, a program once, and they said, these 33 clubs represent the 33 towns that make up the Remo area. Do you understand? So every time they're playing, they're representing the Remo area. Do you understand? So that's for Remo stars. Can we see the, uh, more of these brands? This is for Rangers International. This is Rangers against a black background. You know, this is, I, I don't know whether this is supposed to be a black and white uh, version of the logo. Um, I did, we checked to see if we could get that. We didn't see this is the logo against a white background, all right? And then um, there's the one for Sporting Lagos that um, is both, yeah, this is Sporting Lagos. I personally like the, the Sporting Lagos. I, I feel it's cool and it's clean, it's understated, well, it's classy. Do you understand? And this is it against um, a white background. Yeah, so these are just like visual representations of what we hope would have been exercises that would have showed, that would have revealed what sort of brand they wanted, they want to, to build, what vision they have for the brand, and what values and what their people are and all of that. You can see the further interpretation of the, the further usage of the brand as it contains um, Sporting Lagos. So what, what do you think of what you have seen? Do you, do you, I know that you go deeper to say, okay, for me to appreciate this, I need to know more. Well, what do you think? Uh, yeah, of course. Um, I haven't um, had the uh, privilege of uh, speaking to the creators of some of these um, brands, uh, club identities. Mm. But if you look at what um, Remo Stars have done, for instance, mm. you know, just using the figure to represent the 33 towns mm. that are in Remo, yeah. you know. Uh, that, for me, is a good one mm -hmm. because it's a way of also saying that, look, every town here, come. Yeah, we we all this club together. together you yeah. know, it's a way of engaging mm -hmm. the entire community. Mm -hmm. And it's also a way of projecting their cultural identity, mm -hmm. which is origin. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, one of the, one of the, one of the central elements for achieving uniqueness in your brand identity mm. has to do with origin. Mm. Because when you find a way of projecting your origin in your brand identity, mm. it makes it gives you uniqueness. It makes a lot of it, it makes a lot of difference. And I I am beginning to see some element of that coming into some of these clubs. Mm. You know, because when they are not in the club apparel, they wear some traditional attire. Mm. I also want to s begin to see, as time goes on, how some of our culture, some of the elements of our cultural identity mm. can be projected even in the way we design our jerseys for these clubs. Mm. You know, because these clubs, are, they have their various localities, yeah. you know. You have vendor insurance, for example. In Benin, you can have, you, yeah. I mean, you have, um, um, you have, you have the various localities where these clubs come from. Mm. And when you look at Nigeria as a whole, we have such exciting cultural diversity. So you can imagine if, in giving our clubs identity. You can imagine how exciting and colorful it will be if we now begin to reflect cultural identity mm -hmm. in, 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 in this clause. Because visual identity is very strong mm -hmm. with, with where you are branding clubs. Mm -hmm. Because people will buy the jerseys, your merchandise, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And those 
um, brand assets too must be appealing, must mm. be attractive mm. in terms of design. And mm. you should be proud to want to wear these jerseys, mm. right? And to achieve that level, you must apply some serious, you know, uh, professional uh, branding inputs. Mm. That way, you can even now begin to attract sponsors because mm. we've just given, we've, we just opposed the, the way uh, product brand managers, mm. the way they are passionate about their brand. Mm. Mm. I will now compare it with how uh, our sports, those who run our sports, mm. how they have not paid attention to that. I mean, you can see the difference. Mm. And that is one of the reasons why sponsorship is not so... Enthusiastic. Not so ex enthusiastic, but because mm. the, the brand managers are not seeing what they want to associate their brands with. Mm. They are mm. not seeing it. And as, 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 as soon as you are able to bring in those elements, sponsors will be attracted because if, for example, mm. I want to put my brand name mm. on your jersey, and I'm looking at the jersey, and the jersey is looking like rubbish to me. I don't want to put my brand logo on that jersey, mm. okay? But if it is attractive, and I know that a lot of people will want to wear it with pride, mm. then I, I have that incentive to want to put my brand logo on it. Okay, so who owns the, the brand? You, that, owned, that created the brand, or the customers or fans? You know, that's a running debate. Uh, there are different levels of ownership. Yeah. <laughs> there are different levels of ownership. Yeah. And you see, and that is why now, when we talk about value creation mm. in branding, mm. we talk about brand value proposition. Okay. And when we break it down, brand value proposition means that you must create value for all stakeholders. Mm. Eh? Now, you, you now break it down for that. Who are these stakeholders? stakeholders yeah. So, you have the fans, you have the players and other professionals within, the, within that sector. Yeah. And then you have the shareholders. You know, in some clubs, the fans are also shareholders. Mm. Right? Mm. In some other clubs, they are not. Mm. So, ownership is at different levels. But... When we are breaking down the value creation process, we talk about the different stakeholders. Mm. And you must create value for these stakeholders because all these stakeholders are what make the brand successful at the end of the day. Yeah. So you ask yourself, okay, let's take fans who will come to the studio. What are their expectations? Mm. How do we create value for them? Mm. One of the ways some clubs have done that is to say, look, we want to play entertaining style of football. Mm. That is one of the ways they have created value mm. for the fans because mm. fans want to be entertained. And there are some fans that they are not attached to any club. They just want to enjoy a good game of football. Mm. They just want to be entertained. Mm. So if a club says, okay, we want to be known for playing entertainment, and there are, there are clubs that have done that, mm. okay? Now, another club can say, I just gave an example. as okay, halftime in every of our home matches will bring entertainment into mm. the stadium musical entertainment or comedy and all of that let you know those, that's another way to create value if you're talking about creating value for the fans mm. now who are the other stakeholders the players and other professionals the players the coaching crew the physio team the medical people all of those people are also professionals they are as a group now also stakeholders how do you now create value for them right you want to create a and then you now ask yourself so as a player what are the expectations of a player from his club if i'm a professional footballer and playing for this club let's say i'm playing for Ezaga tigers for mm. example what are my expectations as a professional footballer mm. okay now naturally that will include good pay mm. Paid promptly, not that you are going to be owing players' uh, salaries and all those things. Mm. So, when you ask yourself, what are the expectations? And you put measures in place to meet those expectations. And then you go further. The shareholders, what are their expectations? Return on investment. How do you run this club profitably? You see, when you begin to break it down that way, this is, this is the branding process. Mm. Right? Mm. You break it down because... 
I'm coming, remember, I'm coming from brand value proposition. Mm -hmm. And you drill it down. To, by the time you break it down to the last point, you realize that that success is achievable because you break it down now to steps. I say, okay, this is what we are going to do here for, to, 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 to create value for these stakeholders. This is what we have to do to create value for these stakeholders. This is what we have to do to create value for you. And you break it all down and you have a, a strategic plan mm. that you can implement. Yeah. Okay, so um, there's so, some point you made earlier on that I want to amplify. Yeah. Uh, and that's the fact that, you know, you, you have to do, I think what you were saying is that you have to make the brand about you so that it's unique or something like that, you know. And I'm thinking, okay, one of the problems that brands have, uh, brand development, developers and, develop, and managers have, mm. is that you want to build a brand. Mm -hmm. And rather than focus on the elements that are about you, yeah. and because they're unique to you, they are actually refreshing to others, yeah. you, 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 you think, okay, if I focus on the things that are about me, because you know those things, you think they're boring. So you want to now go and adopt things that you have seen that other people have done that worked for them. Do you understand? Not knowing that what you bring that is fresh is what you really are about. And so your brand is authentic. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, as many brands do, you'll be surprised. Then you come across to, to you know, your audience as not being an authentic... Not being different. Just yeah. Do you, do you have a sense that that is something that um, happens, a, you know, a lot? Or do you think when you, you interact know, with your, with your you, prospective clients? You know, you know, we love shortcuts okay. in this country. Mm. And you cannot build a successful brand through shortcuts. Okay. It's a process. You see, brand, brand building is, is nature. It's... It, 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 the process itself mm. aligns with the forces of nature. Okay. And you know when they say you can't cheat nature? Mm. You cannot cheat the process. Okay. It, if, if, if a woman is going to be pregnant and have a baby, she must be ready to go through that process of nine months of pregnancy. Mm. Mm. No matter how much in a hurry you are as a mm. woman, you can't have, you can't conceive and be pregnant and have a baby mm -hmm. in, in, in nine weeks. Yeah. It's the real problem. So yeah. that natural process, yeah. hmm? the branding process is like that. Mm. There are stages to building it. Mm. But when you get to that point, it's like raising a child. Building a brand is like raising a child. Mm. You have to enjoy that journey of when the child cannot stand up, yeah. when the child starts crawling, mm. when the child starts being a toddler, mm. and then starts running. Every stage of it, you know, as a parent, is very exciting. It's a different phase. And that is how the branding process should be. Yes. But we love shortcuts. Mm. We want it to happen mm, overnight. That is why when you look at our sports, generally, even our national team, when you look at how we run sports, this mentality of shortcuts is killing everything. Mm. There is no strategic plan. Nobody has come to. The other day I was listening to the sports minister on radio interview. And the man could not tell us, okay, this is our vision. Mm. This is our strategic plan for the next five years for Nigerian sports, mm. for the next ten years. There is no, nothing to take away. Mm. Other than, uh, okay, maybe they should get a foreign coach or they yeah. should get a local coach. Yeah. There is no plan. Okay, so something else, um, uh, that I want to talk about is... You know how they do creating an identity that that um, makes the club the immediate fans of the club in the immediate environment of the club to feel like this is ours their fate is our fate you know their happiness is our happiness and all of that and i i, I kind of like what happens in the west you know um where most of these club club brands are built from local communities. Yeah. yeah. Where, you know, it's not just even playing good football now. Uh, the people in the community, they have children. Those children want to go into football academies. They say, come to the club academy. Yeah. Can you imagine that? If your child goes to the club academy, 
you draw your, your, your siblings, you draw your parents, you draw your aunties, your yeah. uncles. And if you succeed, that becomes a really huge deal. Like, this is our club that made our... our exactly. Team. Do you understand? Exactly. And then, so, you know that you create jobs for the community. You do, you do... So, when the fans are talking about your club, they're not talking about your club as, you know, just another exciting football club. They're talking about your club like, this is who we are. This is us. This is, you know... So, at what stage of the branding process is that created? That, you see, that is at the very, at the very initial stage. Okay. When you are talking about vision, mm. you, you, you can also break it down mm. to a situation where, okay, I'm creating a club in this locality. Yeah. And I have a vision mm. for this club mm. that every football loving child would dream of playing for this club. In this locality. In this locality. Yeah. Now, how do you make that happen? By some of the things you just said. You have a football academy. You put success factors in place. You position the club. You promote the club. And you, and you apply those branding elements that will draw sponsors to that club. Mm. Because sports is driven by money. Mm. And that money comes from sponsorship, mm. you know, because sometimes we think that government can spend all the money to build our sports. No, yeah. it's the, the bulk of the money must come from sponsorships. But for you to attract sponsorships, you have to you have to brand. Mm. You have to create brands that sponsors want to just latch yeah. on to, yeah. want to want to leverage yeah. to promote their brand. Sponsors are not charities. Yeah. They okay. So we are look. There's. We're, we're, we have to bring this home now. But there's a particular slide that I have that I, I really would want the audience to... Because it creates a distinction between two Nigerian clubs in, in the international space representing Nigeria, but with two different signals. Do you understand? Two different ways to appreciate um, the, the Nigerian brand, for instance. Yeah. Okay, so we have on this... What we have is not, it's not rare monsters. It is beyond limits. Um, football Academy. They are, the, they are the Football Academy of Rare Monsters, right? Yeah. This is uh, beyond limit um, in, in, um, in, uh, in Sweden, where they're playing the Gothia Cup um, tournament, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is their, like, their academy side. And they're there with Lagos, Sporting Lagos. Yeah? Yeah? <coughs> so this is Sporting Lagos, mm -hmm. and the picture before was... Um, uh, Remo Stars. In the Remo Stars image, you, 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 you saw them wearing Agbada and carrying, you know, that's their Nigerian yeah. um, attire, apparel. Yeah. And then this is Sporting Lagos uh, with their, you know, let's just say international apparel. No. You know, what do you, what do you make of how both sides will be appreciated, you think, well, by yeah. an international audience? Okay, see, now, when we were talking about the Remo Stars logo, mm. You have the 33 that represents all the towns. The remote towns, yeah. Now, the academy boys are in Europe yeah. wearing traditional remo attire. Yes. You can see the tie in with the brand. Yes. Yes, yes. You can see that there is, they are intentional yeah. about that. Mm. You know? So, for Sporting Lagos, because well, I don't, I don't read that same style into what they are doing. So I, they I are think these different. Lagos is consistent in yeah. their branding, yeah, because of who they want to reach. Yeah. But but what I'm not too sure of is, did they think about the international dimension? Because like when when you go to Sweden and you're dressed like that. Everybody dresses like that. Do you understand? So you're, you're going to walk past and people say, oh, another club from another country. But then they see boys wearing Agbada and it's a different experience for them. Why are these guys dressed like this? Wow. You know, and you know this when more people and their curiosity and everything, you know. So I think that sometimes what gives you, what you think gives you international relevance, maybe, maybe, may not be, maybe it's your local, your, lo your pride well, in the local. I think, it, I think it boils down to what the club wants mm. to achieve. Yeah. 
there are no hard and fast rules to it. To this, yeah. It, it depends on how they want to project themselves. Project their yeah, identity. Yeah. You know, mm. so we have seen two different examples. Yeah. The most important thing, like you said, is consistency mm. and being intentional about yeah. what you're doing and how you want to go about it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, we were. It's it's been um, it's been a pleasure having you um, uh, here in the studios. I hope a lot of uh, a lot of the people in the Nigerian sports space. We'll see that branding is a huge, it's a huge part of marketing. It's a huge marketing tack that, you know, the most successful companies in the world use to distinguish them, to differentiate themselves from, from competition and to, to, you know, accentuate, you know, the things that they value, uh, the things that they, they stand for and, you know, to, you know, appeal to, you know, different customer, uh, customer bases, base, probably on, on demographics, on psychographics, you know, and, and, and the like. But it all depends on, you know, like Muywa has said, do you have a vision? And if you have a vision, you know, who, who, what market are you playing in? What, what people do you want and all of that? Do you have the right values? Um, if you have values, do you have the right identity that, that um, captures these values that you have, your vision and your values. And then if you have the vision and the values captured in your identity, do you have the right platforms to promote the brand that you're building? Don't be everywhere. Because even in promotions, you know, the people that you're targeting might be in a certain space. And you have to be sure that you understand that space and you meet them where they are and where they're engaging perhaps in, in passionate ways so that you can connect their brand, your brand with their passions, mm -hmm. all right? That is what we have talked about today, sports branding, very important if you're in the sports business space, think about branding and um, engage professionals if you don't know. You know, we like to think that we know these things, but trust me, you don't. You know, you might have the idea, but you need the technique to maximize um, whatever exercise that you embark on, all right? Muiwa, thank you very much for honoring this invitation. There's a lot more we still need to say. You can't say this in an hour. You can't even say it in 10 hours. <laughs> you know, there's still... So we're going to invite you to the state studio to talk some more about um, sports brands and branding. I'm sure that even from today's discourse, there, there are parts you go back and reflect on and say, you know what, maybe we should, we should get into this area that we didn't touch at all uh, next time when we speak. All right. Thank you for, 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 for coming. Thank yeah. you. It's a, it's a pleasure. All right. And so that's been our program for the week. Uh, next week, we are going to have a very important guest coming to talk about, you know, investments in sports, you know, and why, what investors are looking for. Uh, these are guys are, that are right, right now investing in the, in the Nigerian sports space. And they know, believe me, they trust me, they know what what they, uh, what they know their onions when it comes to investment banking, you know, and investments in Nigeria. So, until we meet again next week, this is me, Urufo Ezaga, saying, uh, be productive, be good, and stay safe. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.